First of all, let us together uh, pay our homage to our Supreme Buddha with great gratitude and respect. Namu tasse bhagavatu arehatu sangma sangbuddhasse Namu tasse bhagavatu arehatu sangma sangbuddhasse Namu tasse bhagavatu arehatu sangma sangbuddhasse Let us also pay our tribute to our late Chief Kesri Dhammananda Nayaka Mahathira, who started this tradition of Friday Dhamma Talks. And also let us pay our gratitude to late Venerable Dr. Madhavala Punaji Mahathira and all other teachers who helped us in this path of the practice. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, dear friends in the Dhamma, I welcome you all uh, for this evening uh, Dhamma talk. Uh, I think we are all here sitting as human beings. Uh, there can be other beings also around us who are, uh, f you know, who are willing to listen to the Dhamma, but uh, but mainly we are talking uh, with, about the human life, uh, how the best use of our human life. Um, I remember a very important verse from the Dhammapada, which is a very important Buddhist text, where the, all the poems or gathas uttered by the Buddha uh, are collected. Uh, in this Dhammapada, uh, there are 400 plus uh, verses, uh, poems, and there's one verse which says that uh, it is rare to be born as a human being, and it is difficult to, con to live as a human being, and it is also uh, difficult to find the opportunity to listen uh, to the sublime Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha, and it is very rare, uh, uh, rare is the appearance of a Buddha in this world. So do you like to hear it in Pali? Because when we were small monks, that was one of our uh, training that we had to memorize all, you know, 423 verses. But that's the only one text. <laughs> there are so many other texts. So I can, I can recite that verse, you know, by heart in Pali. Okay, so this is how it sounds in Pali, how the Buddha might have uttered in Pali. Kicho manus pati labho Kichang machan jivitang Kichang sadhang savanang Kicho buddha nang upadu The Pali word kich uh, means rare and difficult. So if you hear the kitch four times, right? So that means it is rare, it's difficult. So there are four things that are really difficult. That is to be, uh, it's, it's rare for any living being in this sansara to be born as a human being. So it's rare. And then it is also uh, difficult for someone to live as a human being, to continue in the humanity, to continue with the human virtues. It's difficult. And the other one is it is difficult to have, a, have an opportunity to listen uh, to, uh, to a teaching of an enlightened Buddha. It's also very difficult and rare. And it's also rare, uh, it is also rare to have a Buddha, you know, an appearance of the Buddhas, appearance of fully enlightened ones in this world is rare because it requires such a long, you know, um, practice. So when you think about all these four rare things in this world, think about yourself. How many things that you have achieved in among these rarest things in the world? 
The first one, it is very rare for any living being to be born as a human being because there are many other options. You know, a human being is only one way that this life can exist. Life can exist in many other forms and human being is only one form. There are many other shapes and forms, many other realms that you know, life can be, you know, can be born and can exist. So among these many other um, ways, uh, there are also fortunate realms, there are also unfortunate realms. Uh, it depends on you know, how we fashion our consciousness, you know, what is our karmic, uh, collect karmic energy. And it's also uh, what kind of you know, realm that you know, uh, we will attach ourselves to. So anyway, among many other uh, possibilities, uh, in this life, you have been born as a human being. Uh, sometimes you may think that, okay, how good if I was born as a divine being? You know, uh, who's having very ephemeral bodies and doesn't have to, you know, maintain this kind of coarse, you know, body, doesn't have to eat every day. <laughs> Um, but oh yes, you know there are there are some you know uh, benefits and some uh, good aspects of a divine being, uh, but there are also some disadvantages. We will come to that later. But among this, the uh, the f four rare things you, know, you have achieved the first one. You know you you have been born as a human being, and in this lifetime you are a human. It's a rare thing. It's a precious thing. And then the second one is that it's difficult to, uh, to live as a human being, continue uh, to, to maintain that human nature in us. It's also difficult. It's one thing to be born as a human being, it's another thing to continue our human nature. <laughs> because within us there are so many other possibilities. In our mind has all these tendencies, all these possibilities, so this time it happens to manifest as a human being, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any other tendencies. It has other tendencies too. And it's also, our mind is also not fixed. Either we can develop it or we can, what is the opposite of develop? Degrade it, right? Uh, and so, so it's difficult to maintain the human nature. Uh, we very easily we can, uh, even uh, as human beings, although we live as human beings, we can easily go into other realms. And you are exp we can experience few realms in a day. There's an interesting story about that, you know, uh, uh, Zen story. That you, you, have you heard about samurai? Right? Yes. So one day uh, a samurai want to actually, um, uh, because they are committed or very loyal, you know, fighters. And so they are willing to even, you know, you know sacrifice their life, you know, for the, for the cause. So he really wanted to know about, you know, what is ha going to happen after the death. So therefore, um, so he wanted to know about all these afterlife stories. So he heard about a monk who can explain uh, heaven and hell very clearly. So he heard about that. He really wanted to learn something from him. So he uh, purposely you know, went to see this master. Uh, but he went with his full vestment uh, as a samurai with his sword. Uh, so he went to the, went to the uh, uh, monk. Uh, and then monk was in the in the shrine hall, and he paid his respect, and told him that I came to know about hell and heaven. But the monks doesn't seem to be happy, and monks just look at him from head to toe, and ask him, "What are you wearing? And is this a way that someone should come to a monastery?" Look at you, you know, you look so ugly with this vestment. And you look so inappropriate for this place. It looks like you doesn't know any manners to come to the uh, temple. 
So we keep blaming and blaming and blaming. And then the monk said the most offensive thing to a samurai. That is to ridicule his sword. The sword is the most precious thing that made. So monk, you know, after continuous blaming and scolding, he said that looks like, you know, the way you behave, most probably your sword also may be rusted. That was the limit. <laughs> the insult. That was the, the highest insult you can make. When the monks were, you know, you know insulting and you know, telling all these things and he, he got really, really, really angry. The moment he insulted the sword, without his knowing, his hand went to the, the you know, to the the handle of the sword and he took the sword out. Now he cannot control himself, you know, doesn't know what's going to happen. He was shivering, he was um, shivering with the, with, with, with the hate and the anger. Uh, and he got the sword out. And the moment that he's taking the sword out with his all anger and his face is red, and he's so uncomfortable, so pain and in fire. <laughs> and the monk said that, uh, your honor, now you are in hell. <laughs> and then, <laughs> actually, the, all the while, the monk has been teaching him <laughs> the, what he wants to learn. <laughs> Not through a lesson, <laughs> but you know, let, let him experience what it feels <laughs> like in hell. You know, uh, because you have to bring your mind to that level. Uh, so, I mean, if, if the monks were like late, <laughs> a few seconds, we don't know, yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. But he explained that, you know, yeah, you honor, you are now in hell. And then he explained that, feel, observe this pain, observe this uh, fire inside of you, observe this burning sensation, you know, how, how do you feel now? This is how it feels like to be in the hell. And then, this <laughs> so, samurai got really, you know, uh, uh, ashamed of himself. You know, he felt, you know, I mean, he was, he was uh, uh, really, you know, not controlled, and he didn't control his anger. And now he slowly put his uh, sword back. And then monks was teaching him, you know, and then this is how, you know, what what can happen to us. Our mind is so vulnerable if you don't have, you know, strong training or mindfulness, and you know, it can move like this and we can easily commit you know bad karma we can easily hurt others and it is such a vulnerable thing you know and 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 so we that is why we really need to train our mind so monks are teaching all these things so when when he hear all these things he he really felt like you know this monk took such a you know great risk of you know insulting me <laughs> to you know, help me to experience hell. And he took such a great risk to teach me, you know, what a good teacher he is, right? And so he started to feel grateful for that monk's guidance and his teachings and his... And so he felt so grateful and honored, so he really wanted to pay respect to him and ask forgiveness. So he bowed down and paid respect and, and, and expressed his gratitude and then the monk said that, Your Honor, now you are in heaven. <laughs> Look at your mind, you know, how, how, you know, how satisfied it is now, you know, how you feel is like a fool with gratitude. How you, uh, what you feel, you know, kind of, you know, comfort that you are having, fulfillment that you can feel, comfort you are feeling. And this is how, you know, uh, how it, it feels like to be in heaven when you are in f fulfillment, when you have no burning, you know. Uh, so then, of course, the samurai felt more grateful uh, after teaching this. Uh, so this story can, you know, help us to understand how actually even when we are in the human form, how we can move to different realms in a day, <laughs> right? Uh, so I don't know how to how many realms you went today. <laughs> yeah, in this case, of course, you know, uh, the, the, the only to understand heaven and hell is a very uh, 
basic understanding of afterlife, afterlife, but in life can exist in too many other realms. And there's not only two realms, you know, at least there are six main realms, you know, but within that we can also have other, you know, um, categories because mind can be that complicated and complex. For example, there's one realm that we know we call ghost realms. <laughs> Right, a hungry ghost, you know, and by that, that's the translation of the term uh, peta. Uh, so in that realm, uh, so, so that when, when we are so much attached to certain things and attached to certain, um, uh, even to people or to things and, and always yearning and, and, and kind of fe having a feeling like I cannot live without it and having that kind of, you know, missing and yearning and attach feeling uh, and that can bring someone to push someone to be born as a ghost because when you attach to your own let's say you attach a certain place or a property you know or thing you know and then even when you die that's the thing that's the only thing that you worry about you have concern about you think about it and when you die you still want to come and <laughs> be around it um, so that is the ghost realm so and even in our normal life, when you have that kind of, you know, attachment or even like addiction to something, let's say, you know, and then you'll be in, in the, in the goal, ghost realm in that moment, you know, yeah. Maybe like, you know, let's say you want, some people want to, you know, smoke. Some people want to have some, you know, some substance, some drink or whatever, when you, they don't have it, you know, they have that feeling, you know, that uh, yearning and they can't, you know, very, very unfulfilling burning. And, and so then we are in the ghost realm. You know, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes some people cannot escape their coffee in the morning <laughs> or tea in the morning. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is a real, really like, you know, hell realm. <laughs> oh, no, I mean the ghost realm. <laughs> but when you don't have it, you know, you have that, you know, yearning, that wanting, that, that's that's how it feels like to be in in a ghost realm. So anyway, so even when we are in a human form, uh, in, in a, mainly, but our mind can travel to different realms. Even uh, we are in the human form. So in different because it has these capacities, and of course, because we have been born as a human being, it will come to the human nature, but it will you know travel back and forth and we will experience those different, you know, frequencies, different, you know, shapes of our mind. But one thing you need to remember that you just have to ask, um, uh, well, how often I go to those different realms? And what is the realm that I'm, I, am, I am experiencing most of the time? <laughs> because whatever the realm that you are experiencing most of the time will probably be the next realm <laughs> that you will be born to. Because that's the conditioning that we are preparing. That's what happened, right? And if someone is always, you know, in that anger mood all the time, and that's the kind of nature, it becomes your second nature and becomes your main nature next, later, right? So because that's your conditioning that you are doing again and again. So therefore, um, so our mind has that, you know, different potentials and the capacities. It can move, you know, up and down. So that is why we really need to, you know, Pay attention to our mind, and then, um, and so therefore, it is very difficult to maintain the human nature, <laughs> to to really, really live in that human nature, you know, with that goodness. Because in order for us to be born as a human being, we should have, you know, evolve ourselves in our previous life so much. Uh, of course, we have done a lot of good karma, definitely. But at the same time, uh, our status of the mind, we have evolved it through many, many, many efforts. We don't know for how long. So, so it requires such you know, effort and such um, practice, such training for us to evolve into a human realm. Uh, and so that is why we, so we, we have done it somehow. <laughs> so we are now in this uh, state. But then the question is that, what would be the best use, best use of this very precious human life? What would be the best use of it? Right. So we can think about, you know, we can have um, many other things that we can use in many ways. You know, I always think about a seed. 
you know, uh, the one important seed will be like a, um, you know, the seed of oak tree, we call acorn. It's a beautiful, nice, you know, nut, a uh, seed, so seed, right? So we can, we can think about any other beautiful nut or seed. So when you have such a seed, let's say acorn or any other beautiful seed, you can use it for many purposes. You can use this seed uh, to decorate. And you, you get all these seeds, you decorate something. Right? And, um, uh, and so, and sometimes even you can use it as a toy. You can play with it, right? You can, sometimes we use those nuts and seeds as, as toys. So that's another use. Of course, if you use a, a seed uh, or nut to decorate, uh, not, not bad thing, right? I mean, it's, it's nice you're using that for some purpose. If you, someone can use as a toy, that is also nice. You know, when you are children, in your generation, I think you still use natural things to play, right? A lot of, you know, nuts and, you know, um, you know seeds, you know, your, play, your, your toys. Uh, so it is also not bad, but, but that's one use. Sometimes you can even use a, 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 a seed to hit someone, <laughs> right? You can throw it, you know, like a stone. You can, you can you, even you can use an acorn to like hit someone. There's another use, not a good use, right? But what would be the best use of a seed, right? Yeah, what would be the best use of an acorn, you know? We can use it to decorate, you know, as a toy, whatever. But the best use of that would be to you know, use its full potential to grow it, to become a really big tree. That would be the best use of it. And then it can you know, provide that you know, shade and everything to anyone and it also produ can produce more seeds. So that would be the best use. But you can still use them for other purposes. Like a flower also the same, right? So we can use flower for all different purposes. So in the same way, we can use our human life also for all kind of purposes. <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, and sometimes you can use your human life to, you know, hurt others, to punish others, and right? give hard time to others, just like we use a seed to hit someone, right? That will be one uh, way that you always, you know, you, you live your life to teach lessons to others. <laughs> Some people have that, <laughs> that purpose, right? You know, you know I mean, yeah, I want to like teach a lesson, you know. Like <laughs> so you want to correct everyone. <laughs> so you make sure that you teach them some lessons and you, you took it as a burden and, and try, to, try to do it. And um, so some people, you know, may use their life in that way. So of course, as human beings, we are actually using our life for many, many purposes. Definitely. We can use our life to... Um, uh, to bring up a family, which is a great thing, right? You you sacrifice your life and you, you know, um, you know, work and you feed and you you know uh, raise children and you use your life to uh, raise a family, which is a great thing. And it requires a lot of sacrifices, right? And then you can also use your life to develop a career. You know, become really a professional, you know, like really a pro uh, professional person, you know, being, being an expert in certain field uh, and then, you know, develop a career and then maybe using that skill to help others. So that will be another one. And sometimes you can use your life to start an institution, a company, a business. You know, of course, it's also good, you know, so that, that can benefit so many other people and it also give you the, the power and the ability to, you know, benefit others. So there are many ways that we can use our human life for many purposes. But what would be the best use? <laughs> right? So you can raise a family, you can start, you can use your life to, you know, run a business, uh, maybe start, uh, I mean, to develop a career. Uh, but all these things uh, has an end. Unfortunately, even we give our whole life to raise a family, we are not going to stay with them forever, and they are not going to stay with us forever. Of course, you know, uh, everyone's life is going to end, but 
in the case of family, even before your life is end, you know, they are going to leave you. <laughs> I mean, leave you means, you know, not really. Uh, uh, but, you know, so although we, we like to keep them around us and you know, near us, you know, in our vicinity, in our, um, you know, maybe controls in some cases, but that's not going to happen, right? So anyway, but, but all these things has limitations. And by the time we finish our human life, by the time that we finish our precious human life, will you be fully satisfied that you did the successful business? Will you be fully satisfied that you were a, a great profession, a pro professional, maybe an expert in certain field? Will you be more satisfied that, you know, I raised a good family? Maybe, yeah, I mean, you, you can have some satisfaction. But is it enough? Is it enough? That's the question we have to ask. Can, you know, was, was this the best use of my precious human life? That I came to this human world and then, and I spent, you know, this life for this. So we have to ask that question, you know, quite often to like help us to understand maybe like I said, uh, priorities, you know, in, in our life. Uh, so um, I would say that you know whatever the, the few examples that I, I gave you, you know they are really you know beneficial you know uh, use of this human life. But our goal here is to discover what would be the best one, not the good one. <laughs> of course, it it will be really good you know use of your human life if you start a business or a career that can help so many people rather than going around and you know giving hard time you know maybe hurting or harming other beings, definitely. It's a really good use. But what would be the best use? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we think about that, actually, um, if you uh, think about the teachings of the Buddha, Buddha taught us that actually, uh, anyone who is in the human realm has this very special ability, very special capacity. Because as human beings, uh, we have this possibility, this opportunity to go beyond our ordinary nature. For other realms, you don't have that, uh, that, uh, that opportunity. If you are bo being born as an animal or any other you know, realm, and you have certain limitation in that realm, and you just you know, live within that limitation, and then in order to change, you have to exhaust your lifespan and being born into another realm. Even with the divine realm, there are very, there are limitation how much they can change, because they are simply benefiting, maybe benefiting the results of their good karma, uh, and also sometimes when life is too comfortable, too luxurious, you don't feel like you know changing or growing. <laughs> you take everything for granted, right? Yeah, uh, and so you don't. It's not a good. The divine realm is not a good place to grow because everything is too uh, comfortable, too pampered. You know, you don't really take everything, anything seriously. So therefore, um, as, a, uh, as a human being, we have this capacity that we can actually upgrade ourselves. <laughs> we can upgrade ourselves. So therefore, Buddha said that it is, it is the human birth, human realm that has the most um, op opportunity to become enlightened means that to go beyond our limitations of our mind and go beyond our uh, delusions and our ignorance and going beyond our weaknesses and change ourselves to grow ourselves. So, as human beings, we have this capacity to look into ourselves. In other living beings, they don't have that much of capacity to look into themselves, to examine themselves and ask this question, you know. And, and, but human beings have this capacity. So therefore, the, uh, according to the teachings of the Buddha, while we are doing all these other things with our, to our family, to our society, uh, you know, to our community, uh, and we also have to think about how we can upgrade ourselves. Because when we, when we are born as a human being, we, we have been born with certain 
qualities, certain virtues, certain, you know, um, uh, virtues in us, but not exactly at the same level. Of course, it requires that kind of evolution, that kind of, you know, development and training, uh, practice for us to be born as a human being. But in our human mind, we, we all have different virtues, good virtues, but they are not in the same level. I mean, for example, compassion. We are born with compassion, but our level of compassion is not the same. Different people have different levels of compassion. One other good watch will be patience, right? The ability to accept, you know, be okay with that, with whatever situation. And we all have some level of patience, but everyone is not the same. <laughs> we have different levels of, levels of patience. So in the same way, all these wholesome qualities that we all are born with, uh, have certain levels. So, so only as human beings we can actually grow them. We can purposely cultivate them, grow them. So virtues can be cultivated. Wholesome qualities can be cultivated. They can be grown. So it's only human beings have that capacity. But at the same time, although we are so fortunate, we have done so much of merit and good karma to be born as a human being, that doesn't mean that we are perfect. We also have our own weaknesses. And then it is only human beings have the capacity to observe and notice and detect our weaknesses and then gradually practice and train ourselves to overcome them. So all our weaknesses that we have are not permanent, you know, they are simply habits, they are simply our unwise, you know, uh, uh, tendencies. But we can gradually pay attention to them and, and gradually change them. So only human beings have that capacity, what we call, to upgrade ourselves. So we were born as human beings, we have uh, very basic similarity among ourselves, but within that, we have different levels of our defilements, different levels of our kusala qualities, our wholesome qualities, our virtues. But, so the, the best use of human uh, life would be actually to, to understand one's own life and then recognize the virtues that you know, we, are, we have and then and also to cultivate them at the same time, recognize our weaknesses and then pay attention to that and then, and, uh, and then try to weaken them, if not approve them, at least to weaken them. And it's very important to, to accept that, you know, we have weaknesses. You know, sometimes you know, we like to justify. We like to justify our weaknesses, you know, and always, you know, don't like to look at them, don't like to, you know, accept them, you know, we want to like, you know, justify, you know, those weaknesses and we try to put the blame on others. So that does, will not allow us to, you know, recognize and grow. So therefore, uh, the best use of human life would be most probably to understand oneself. You know, this piece of life, you know, right now is a human being, is the only opportunity that that, 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 that life can understand itself. Such a rare opportunity. No, because that piece of life can understand itself. How it is operating, how it is functioning, how it is, how it is doing, what are the you know, virtues, what are the weaknesses. So to use that will be the best use. You know, even like when you think about like in, in scientific terms, you know, um, we, in our brain, you know, we have this um, a special... Uh, a part, you know, the, uh, the frontal lobe, we call free, free frontal cortex, that has this special ability so that we can be aware of our own thinking, which is not a common thing for many other living beings. We can, all other living beings can think, can rationalize, can, I mean, not to the same level as human beings, may, but they can think, they can rationalize, they can, you know, continue to produce thoughts, uh, but as human beings, not only that we can think, but we can know that we, can, we are thinking. <laughs> that's a special ability. I think that's, so we, we can think, but we can also be aware that we are thinking. 
while we are having thoughts, we can be aware of that. That is exactly what we do in our meditation, right? When we're having thoughts, we let the thoughts to run, and then we use our ability of mindfulness to watch the very thoughts that mind is producing. Imagine that, you know, what a rare capacity is that, right? So we, we, uh, we can think, but if you want, we, you can also be aware of your thinking. So therefore, our species you know, is, is, co is, is called Homo sapiens, right? But actually, is, that's not the ex right term. The next, this generation right now, our present generation <laughs> of you know, uh, yeah, humans is called Homo sapiens sapiens. We have two sapiens. <laughs> because, of course, sapiens means actually thinking, you know, Sophia, you know, is wisdom, you know, in uh, knowledge or wisdom in Greek. So, sapiens means thinking, maybe rational. You know. So, Homo sapiens means rational being, rational human. So, we are not only rational, we have a second sapien. <laughs> because we have this, you know, prefrontal cortex. So, we are not only rational beings, we, are, we can also be aware of our reasoning. That's a whole different ability. So we are not homo sapiens, actually, we are homo sapiens sapiens. <laughs> so we have this special ability that we can become aware of our own reasonings. So if we, if we want, we can even observe the, how the very reasonings can be biased. You know, very reasoning can be, you know, uh, un, unjustifiable, you know. So we can even watch that. So using that ability, then we can actually grow, grow more than who we are. So uh, to upgrade ourselves to next level. <laughs> yeah, maybe some, maybe we have to find a different term after Homo sapiens and maybe some, <coughs> something else, something related to goodness. So, so that is why in the, in the Buddhist term, the Buddha always encouraged us that we all, as human beings, although we have this precious life, precious birth as a human being, Buddha called everyone who, has not, who is not enlightened a, a putujjana. Putujjana, you know, so putujjana, that's the term for all the people who are with defilements, with you know, unenlightened, you know, all of us are putujjana. Uh, it has the meaning that uh, putu is actually uh, is usually used, that, that the term is used um, to mean that the one who is actually separate oneself from the rest of the world. <laughs> that, you know, when we make that discrimination that, you know, you have this, you know, self-attachment or like you, when you separate your life from the rest of the other life and, and, and that's what usually happens, you know, that's how we all think about ourselves, you know, taking ourselves to be the most special person in the world, and the rest of the lives are secondary. And, and, and that's how you usually think, right? And this, this person's needs is the most important needs, and all other needs come later. Right? So that way of thinking, you know, like, you know separate, separating oneself from the rest of the lives. So we, so we put the call them, call us, <laughs> Potojana. And you know, sometimes we call the ordinary people, you know, normal people. And in, in, there's a very interesting English translation of that term called run of the mill person. <laughs> yeah, the ordinary, the vast majority of us. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the Buddha encourages us to observe our putujjana nature. Uh, it also means that actually we are simply victims of our habitual thinking, we are victims of our uh, ignorance. Actually, the ignorance is uh, used by the Buddha, the Pali term is avidya, not to insult us, not to ridicule us actually. The, although the translation is ignorance, the avidya refers to kind of blindness that we all are having. You know, we are blind uh, to our own life. You know, we are blind to very process of life. Although we are living our life, we are blind how life happens. We are blind to the process how life happens. And in, in this case, we, although we are experiencing the world, we are 
seeing things, hearing things, tasting things, and you know, thinking, you know, and then organizing and rationalizing. So we are experiencing the world, but we are blind to the very process of experience. So that because of that blindness, it allows us to create a separate person or a being or who uh, separate from the rest of the world. So that's, that's basic blindness, that we all, all, all have that as Bhutujjana. So, so Buddha said that we can gradually observe them. And although it's fundamentally difficult, it's kind of create a kind of blindness to us. Uh, and we can live our life, but you know, we, our brain is, not, our, our mind is such that it doesn't allow, <laughs> doesn't reveal us <laughs> the, how all these things happen. It's almost like we are all uh, watching a drama in the front seat, not really observing and realizing and seeing exactly how the drama has been made. That is our life is. We are all ex 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 uh, spectators, right? <laughs> Weavers. We enjoy the drama, we cry about you know, things happening, we laugh about it, and it's a, it's, it's a drama. But we are ob you know, we're watching it in the front and we are experiencing mm -hmm. all these emotions, we take things seriously, uh, and forgetting that it's a drama. <laughs> and that is avidya, and our whole our life is like that. You know, our whole life is an experience. We produce our experience all the time using our sensory organs, using our conceptual categories in our mind. We are always producing our experience, and then we become victims. And we, but we, but <laughs> we are we are producing the experience, but we forget that we are the one who's producing the experience. And so that is that is what is happening to our life. You know. Um, we can talk about it, but still we'll be still in the front seat, <laughs> enjoying the movie. <laughs> or some, if it is enjoying, that's good, but most of the time we are not enjoying. You know, we are anxious, we are frustrated, we are uh, sad, you know. And we, are, we go through all kinds of emotions without realizing that all th these things are constructed. Um, but that's, that's the blindness that we all have, avidya. But as human beings, we can slowly, slowly... Uh, start to observe it and understand it and develop more realization about it and start to feel a little bit more relaxed and not to be fooled by so many things that we take as very you know seriously and very um, you know giving undue value to them so so Buddha said that the, as um, uh, our goal by practicing the Dhamma should be if moving from Puto jana to to higher level, and Buddha called them Arya Puggala. Arya Puggala, you know, I remember Bhante Punaji called them like being superhuman, right? Supernormal, and going beyond normalcy, right? Going beyond Puto jana and be becoming Arya, noble, but actually being going beyond normal. So, so that, that we have that capacity, we have that ability. So the best use of our human life would be actually, <clears throat> while we are fulfilling all these duties, taking care of so many things in our life, taking the time to understand life itself and how mm. this is really happening here. You know, how I'm ex experiencing the world and you know, is, is how I experience the world, is it really existing as I experience it? Or is it, you know, something that I also, you know, add in the very in the process of, you know, experiencing the world? You know, when we look at something, when you see something, are we really seeing what is in front of us, or are we using whatever in front of us and then bringing our own, you know, concepts and you know memories and values and project what we have in our mind and then, you know, project what we have inside to the outside, <clears throat> and and we can start to observe or this process. So therefore, <clears throat> so our, the uh, best use of our life would be to take this opportunity, to take this special ability, you know, that the ability to be aware of our own thinking, our own reasoning, and that is what the Buddha has guided us to become, to go beyond this normal human nature, go beyond the Putujjana level, and gradually start to observe our own uh, habitual patterns, you know, you may, let's say, 
something happen um, in front of you, you feel like, you know, uh, you feel like taking it. Or maybe you, so whatever the natural urge that is coming to us, we take them as very normal, very natural. But we can start to observe it and, and recognize that it's a habitual pattern. It's a habitual pattern. Uh, and then if you realize that that pattern is not helping, it's creating more pain and suffering uh, uh, in us, and then we can start to like observe it, notice it, and then try to change it, right? Uh, uh, and so, so therefore most of our natural, what we call natural you know, urges, the way we feel like you know, other people, so the way we react to certain situations, when something happens, let's say you drop something at home, you know, something drop and all into pieces. You know, how you react to that situation? If you have two people in, in the house, and they will react two different ways. If you have four people, four different ways, you know, how you, how you perceive that thing, right? <clears throat> and, if, and maybe the, someone who paid the money to buy that will have, will have most, you know, react, most, you know, uh, dramatic reaction to it. But most of the time, actually, our reaction to such situations, even like, you know, other things, like so you get a, a, a very nasty text message from someone, and, and how you react, how you, what you feel like doing. And, you know, although it feels very natural to us, that the way, what you feel like doing in that reaction, and it's a habitual pattern. It's a habitual pattern means that we have done it previously, few times, and now it has become our pattern, our habitual pattern, and it can activate at any time when we, when we encounter similar situations. And if you react in the same way, that pattern will get stronger. And the next time, you don't want such a big event, even a simple event can trigger that pattern. But then what we do, actually, we, uh, we think that that is my nature. That is, that is who I am. That is who I am, you know, and that is, this is my character. <laughs> and so we create an identity. You know, I'm like this, you know, this is my nature, this is my character. So you better know. <laughs> and, and you have no choice, you have to be with me, this is me. So we create that identity and we'll, so we kind of fix it and seal it, you know, almost like, you know, blocking all the opportunities to change. Because we have created an identity now, and then we, <laughs> uh, we don't allow any um, possibility for change. But that's not how we can use our human life. You know, always understanding that we are all putujanas, which means that you know, we, are, we have limitations, we have virtues, but at the same time we have weaknesses. And we have this basic blindness that is underline everyone, you know, but, but we can break through it, but, but it is there, it is there. So don't necessarily believe what all, you know, we notice, we all see, what all, all come to our mind. We, we see them, we notice them, but we don't make judgments, you know, like, like final judgments, you know. Uh, so we start to like observe ourselves and then, uh, and try to slowly, slowly change the weaknesses that we ha have, and then <clears throat> grow our understanding little by little, and so we can do it our, in our daily uh, dealing with other people, our daily activities. We can do it uh, through meditation, and meditation practices will help us to go beyond our, <clears throat> uh, our habitual tendencies, our normal level. Uh, but we can use our uh, knowledge or experience we get in meditation in our daily life. Yeah, so every difficult moment in our life become an opportunity for us to observe our own habitual pattern. So next time if something breaks in your home, don't be upset. That just gives you an opportunity. Okay, let me see what is happening in my mind. Let me reveal you know, what are these patterns in which has been hidden all the while. <laughs> And you, you thought that you are such a patient, you know, such an easygoing person, and then now you realize all kind of thoughts, you know, patterns occurring in your mind. So you use this as an opportunity to understand ourselves, to, you know, uh, to what is real, what are, the, what are the tendencies, what are the habits. And you observe it, you notice it, and then you can, you know, once you notice those patterns, 
you, then you can actually you know, do some self-suggestions. Instead of you know, feeling so upset, you know, so angry, you can, okay, this was broken, and, okay, and, uh, uh, and is it really valuable? You know, is, is, is the end of the story? You know, and are there any other ways you know, that I can somehow you know, live my life without this cup, without this souvenir? <laughs> You know, can't I live my life without this? So you ask those questions and try to like self-suggest, you know, the other ways of looking at the same thing. Uh, so maybe you have, you know, difficult person to deal with at your work. Maybe you, you get, uh, you know, uh, you know um, a boss who is always giving you a hard time. <laughs> maybe, you know, you get a colleague that, you, you know, you always have to work with, you know, it's very difficult to convince him, you know, and, and like, you know, get, to, you know, teamwork, you know. So we can, we can have those things, right? So now we can use those opportunities, not necessarily to correct others, correct the boss or teach a lesson to, you know, others, but actually as an opportunity to watch our own, you know, habitual patterns. And then, because if we don't recognize them, <clears throat> it is difficult to change them. So all of our interactions with other people <clears throat> and also very difficult uh, <clears throat> ex uh, experiences, incidents in our life are good opportunities for us to understand ourselves. So don't think that, you know, whatever those difficult things are, are bad things. And because they, they can really bring us so much wisdom about ourselves. And once you recognize them, and then you can start to work on that. And if you think that you are really easily, you know, uh, uh, getting angry, you know, so once you recognize it, once you accept it, okay, this is my tendency, I need to work on this, and this is not helping me, you know, this can bring me to the hell realm, <laughs> just like that, you know, samurai. <clears throat> and in this life, and also <clears throat> in next lives too, you know. So let, let me work on that, so you can start to observe, <clears throat> you know, your you know, angry thoughts. And then you can also, on the other time, you can start practice loving kindness meditation. So you train the opposite quality on purpose, more and more and more to replace this negative weakness. So we can, we can do that. And <clears throat> usually, whenever we experience any attachment or any anger, the opposite one, any resentment or dislike, it is happening because of our misunderstanding, because of our lack of our understanding. Uh, so we can also use, if you feel attached or, or like wanting something, and that is, that is happening in us uh, because of a lack of understanding. Because when we experience something, uh, if you experience pleasantness, we have our tendency that we only see the pleasant aspect good aspect of that person or that thing and we ignore the other little dots and other little you know weaknesses and that's what is happening to us so if you really have a strong desire for something remember that this is a biased view that i'm having it's, that may be a really good thing maybe a good person definitely but that's not the only thing that person or that thing is having. So you can expand your awareness and say, okay, other than this attractive you know, quality that I'm seeing, what else <laughs> this person is having? You can be unbiased and observe the, the thing or a person or a situation. So you, you can begin to see there are other you know, faults and weaknesses too, true. So you can have a complete picture. And then you still can, we still can like that, but will not be crazy. <laughs> and you can still, you know, handle the situation. In the same way, if you have a strong dislike or anger or resentment to something or someone, again, it's also a biased, uh, you know, understanding, lack of understanding. Because when you notice some unpleasantness, some ugliness, we only focus on that. We ignore all other wholesome things in that person or in that, you know, thing. And that's what our mind is doing. So that's putujjana nature. Right? Yeah, putujjana nature. So you can notice it and take a moment and use your, you know, ability to watch your own thinking and don't believe your thinking and take a moment and observe, okay, this person, this person is nasty. You know, Buddha said that sometimes some people can be really nasty the way they speak and then you just focus on their, their behavior. Sometimes when people can be very sharp, very ugly in the way they speak, but they are doing, the way they work, 
Maybe they are maybe they are more responsible. You know, they they do their job well. Maybe. So just Buddha said, that if you if you find unpleasant in the speech, focus on their deeds. In the actions, we'll be able to find something not all ugly. <laughs> Right. So, in the same way, anything or anyone. So, we can take a moment and and purposely look for some good aspect in that person or in that thing that we dislike so much, and then we can gradually, you know, have more comprehensive understanding of that thing. And then, once we have a comprehensive understanding, we realize that there's this ugliness, this unpleasantness in this thing or this person, but this, there are also these other aspects. So you can deal with that person with some, you know, equanimity. So those are the ways that we can actually evolve ourselves from our weaknesses of a putujjana and gradually you know, change in those things. So although you are actually the change, change the way you think about people and the, and how you react to the situation, what is really happening there is actually a spiritual evolution. There's a spiritual evolution happening inside. <clears throat> Even though you have a, even though the situation is over, you know, you, you happen to you know break something and you get really upset and angry. You blame yourself, you know, and then you observe it. <clears throat> because sometimes some people have a patterns of blaming oneself, some people have pattern of blaming others. <clears throat> so recognize what is yours. What is yours? <clears throat> if something wrong happened, if some accident happens, some people try to has tendency to find someone to blame. Some people, the opposite, they blame themselves and they always, you know, feel themselves. So what is your pattern? You have to discover it. <laughs> and then you start working. Then neither pattern is healthy. So we no one to blame, you know, just, you know, the, the causes and conditions. We can change it, but so observe it and then gradually start to observe it and then change it. So recognizing those patterns. So, so any situation, uh, even though our interaction with that person, our meeting with that person, our you know, uh, dealing with that situation is over, the way we respond to it will remain within us. And if you use your, you know, your ability to observe your own behavior, and of course your understanding of the Dhamma, teachings of the Buddha, and you'll be, you'll be successfully dealing with all this situation, but not only that, you are also actually evolving spiritually. You are moving away, you are upgrading yourself. You are making a better and better version of yourself. You are making a better, so remember that the version that we are having now, don't think that this is the best version of you. <laughs> yeah. This is not the best version of you. you. You have more room to improve. And you know, once, one day when we become a Buddha, you know, the fully enlightened Arahant, you know, and then that will be the best version of ourselves. But meanwhile, this is not the best version of myself. You have to accept it, admit it, but don't blame yourself again. And accept it, admit it, and, and slowly, slowly try to evolve and you know, upgrade. And so that will be the best use of our human life, right? To, to, to try to, try to uh, make our version better and better, you know, just like you know, any new product have now upgrades, right? <laughs> yeah, you are not using this, the same you know, hand phone, the cell phone that you used 10 years ago, right? People will laugh at you, right? When you, so you are using new versions now, you know, a lot of upgrades. Of course, they bring upgrades to earn money. <clears throat> But in our case, we can also start to <laughs> upgrade ourselves. The, the older you become, by right, you should be the better and better version of yourself, not the worst version. <laughs> so the, the more you grow older, don't be the, don't be the you know, troublemaking version of yourself, you know. So be kind to your children, your grandchildren, you know. And then you try to, try to be the as, you know, <laughs> better and better, better version of yourself, you know more patience, you know, more ability to be equanimous, more loving kindness, and more ability to watch your own mind. But of course, you know, when you're growing old, our physical aging can, can limit our mental growth. So before you become really weak, you have to bring your mind to a higher level because there'll be a point that our, you know, growth is stopped and then we will re remain in that state 
um, uh, because our, 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 because in, in order for us to evolve, our physical body also need to support us. So therefore, so anyway, so the best use of human life would be while raising a family, taking care of our family, giving our best to them, and then you know starting you know a, you know a, a, a career, you know starting something that you can benefit so many others. So the best use of human life is definitely benefit others too, you know, and definitely if you can live your life to the level that you are benefiting so many other beings, you know, that will be the real, you know, good use of yourself. But I think, so the benefic benefiting others is, is a consequence of making a better version of yourself, right? So therefore, so ultimately, there is no dichotomy between you know, benefiting and serving others and, and improving yourself. So if you focus more on improving yourself, definitely it is benefiting others too. So let us remember that, and let us uh, remember the Putujjana, so moving from Putujjana state to Arya Puggala state. You know, moving from an ordinary, uh, you know, um, as you know, usually the, as, uh, from the state of victims, uh, in, as a Putujjana, we are a victim to our own habitual patterns. We are victim to our own, you know, ignorance. So we are simply, you know, victims. So that is why even when you, you know, when you develop compassion to, you know, uh, other people, you know, even like people who are doing all, you know, uh, bad things, sometimes we have to think about they are victims. They are victims of their own habitual patterns. They are victims of their own upbringing. You know, and, and they, they haven't had an opportunity to understand this human capacity to, to you know, watch our own thoughts. They haven't had an opportunity to listen to the good teachings. So, so, so they are just repeating their habitual patterns. So we can develop more compassion and maybe help them as much as we can to like, you know, understand uh, that they are, they are actually not really living their life to the fullest. So therefore, so as a Putujjana, we are victims to our own defilements. So right now, we become aware of it. And then we use every opportunity that we get, particularly your problems, your difficulties. You know, uh, those are the moments that we can use to recognize our own patterns and, and try to change the way we usually react and observe them. And of course, practice meditation to develop more skills. And then we will be slowly, slowly evolving ourselves We'll be upgrading ourselves. So by the time we complete this human life, if we can die as someone who is much, much better than the one who was born. <laughs> because when you are born, you already have certain virtues and, you know, and also certain weaknesses. But you use the human life to understand those weaknesses and correct them. And you use your human life to grow those virtues Compassion, you know, patience, all these good virtues. So by the time you complete this human life, you are a much better version of yourself. And that will be the best use of human life. And ultimately, once you make that better version, your next life will be, you are already, you're starting with a higher level. <laughs> you are it is already starting with a lot of higher level of patience, higher level of compassion, you know, less weaknesses. You know, you are already evolved, more evolved beings, more mature beings, right? And then it will be easier for you to do the rest in your next life. And ultimately when you, so that's, that's what we call paramita, right? Perfections. So, and then once we reach the highest level that we fully, we, we fully remove our blindness completely. And then we are full of, you know, compassion and loving kindness and that will be the full enlightenment. So that will be the definite, the best use. But it is a gradual evolution. So I wish for you to become the best version of yourself. You know, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we can, you know, have some uh, sharing, so some questions, more clarifications. Thank you, Bhante, for a very good sharing. Yeah. Bhante, just uh, wondering, right, actually, the things that you share, somehow deep down we know. Mm. But somehow, uh, maybe not enough meditation practice or what, just didn't cross that. Mm. How to have that insight? We know that it is bad, it's not the best way to react. But actually, 
at least if you can become aware of that after the fact, it's already a development. It's already a development because, you know, uh, because some people even don't recognize even after, <laughs> after that. So the, when you say that we know those things, but you cannot really uh, practice it when it's happening, but maybe later we realize that, oh, I could have done better, you know, I could have used it in reflection. In the reflection, if you realize that the possibility that you could have done better, and, if, uh, and that means you already have some growth. Yeah, some growth. So, we, so when, when those, things, those moments, you have like, take the moment and completely reflect and revise, like go back to that incident that you act unwisely, unskillfully. Those are the good lessons. You know, so, that's so, so therefore we can uh, go back and fully like, understand the causes and conditions, whole you know, uh, mechanism of that. And it's like you know, analyzing the, you know, the episode of the drama. Uh, and then, and so, and so we can, t we can take that incident and, and think about all these, you know, the, the, the condition that I, as a person, contribute to that, you know, that ugly situation. You know, the way I speak, the words that I use, and how I was interpreting that, you know, how I got offended, you know, how I got hurt from that word or this thing. You try to analyze all these things and recognize uh, the way you react to it, and that memory, that very analysis can produce a memory in us. And then when you are in a similar situation, hopefully, <laughs> and, and you will you'll be able to like remember how unskillfully you acted earlier case, and, and you have that memory, and then you have some wisdom now to act differently. So, of course, you know, practice developing our mindfulness more and more, because we it's very, we don't become aware of our, our you know, habitual patterns most of the time. If they are blind, you know, if they blindly come into us and we react. <clears throat> but even if we can recognize after the fact, that's already a development. So of course, but you know, if you practice more mindfulness, more meditation, that will give you more ability to become aware of those patterns when they are occurring. And then gradually we can, you know, weaken them. Uh, but if you recognize them after the fact, use that as an opportunity to take a moment to like analyze the whole situation. We have to analyze it objectively, not really putting blames to others or to oneself, but simply understand it's a dependently arising phenomena. You know, the, yeah, like a party, it's a dependently arising phenomena, many causes and conditions, both external and internal. And so just under, try to understand the whole situation without, you know, putting an agent, with the putting, uh, with, without putting blame to anyone. And understanding and analyzing it, that very analysis can help us as a memory, as a guide for our next situations. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, from Putujjana to Arya Puggala. Yeah, but that's also in between state. Putujjana uh, is like everyone, you know, everyone who's blind to, you know, one's you know, own experience, blind to one's own, you know, defilements, you know, they just be victims. So they're like Putujjana. But once you start to, like, understand these things, but it's still, you know, they're still victims, but you know now a little bit, we call them Sappurisa. Sappurisa, you know, Sappurisa. Sappurisa, who knows the Dhamma, you know, who knows you know, who has, who has association with, uh, who, uh, with, you know, good teachers, you know, the evil people. So we call Sapurisa level, you know. So if you are really practicing Buddhist, if, I mean, really practicing one, and, and you are like a Sapurisa. Uh, and then once you keep on practicing that and you know, put into practice, and actually when you make a real change, the way our mind operates, the way we react, and then you are moving to Arya Puggala uh, state. Arya Puggala. Puggala. Puggala means person, yeah. Arya Puggala, noble person. So Putujjana, Sappurisa, and Arya Puggala. And Arya Puggala has four stages all the way to the enlightenment. And you know, we call it stream enterer, you know, uh, and once returner, non returner, and the Arahant. So those are the stages within the Arya Puggala level. So, but we are, we are moving towards that, you know, it's from Putujjana to Sappurisa, we are Sappurisa to um, Arya Puggala. 
I try not to use many Pali terms, you know, yeah. But if you want, I can. Anybody else? Any other questions for Bante? Bante, I remember seeing this T-shirt someone wore. I think this is a good... Uh, someone? Oh, this? Yeah. no, actually. So you can show them. Yeah, it's on my phone. It's actually Darwin's theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. If you can see. The next step, next pace of evolution. I think, you know, I remember, brother, you know, Bhante Purnaji's uh, book. Uh, I think, um, I don't uh, exactly remember which book. He said that, you know, this is not the culmination of the evolution. You know, so there's a whole different level of evolution, what you call spiritual evolution, but that spiritual evolution will not happen naturally. <laughs> the other evolution happens through the natural selection, with the interaction with the you know, environment, but the spiritual evolution happens with effort. So the next phase of evolution is the spiritual evolution, and just like this, what this you know, image is showing, but it, it requires you know, effort and then you know, more awareness. Yeah. Bhante, um, as uh, Putujanas, I think uh, we have both our weaknesses and also our virtues. Yes. So you, you see some people who may be very short-tempered or bad-tempered and get angry very fast, and yet they can be the kindest and most generous person. Yeah, at, 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 at other times. Yes, yes. You know, the, yeah. so... Uh, if a person like this cannot change or uh, cannot correct himself on the weaknesses, is there hope for this person if he continues to develop himself further and further in his virtues? In, in his wholesome side. Yes, you know. in his virtues. Because we are imperfect. And yeah. of course, uh, you're right, this is an evolution. We have to work on it. But between not progressing at all on both sides, mm. if one side cannot move, but the other side can move faster, yeah. is there it, hope? It can replace. Can, yeah. can it, can it, do, can it example, be an equaliser? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> because it's actually the, the, the <laughs> two sides of the same coin, right? So if you develop more positivity, and gradually it can replace the negative pattern. So either we can directly address the negative pattern and observe it, and not let it repeat, and then by not letting it repeat, we weaken it. So that's one way, like directly confronting the negative pattern. But on the other time, we can purposely grow the wholesome ones. For example, if you cannot control your anger, don't worry about that, but when you're not angry, <coughs> meditate on loving kindness, separately, for example. So then, <coughs> so when you grow that one, your tendency to like irritate will be reduced, definitely. So that's why we have four aspects of, you know, uh, right effort. The four aspects of the right effort, like one is to, you know, prevent unwholesome, ten, uh, unwholesome qualities from arising, right? And then restrain already arising unwholesome qualities, and then cultivate unarising wholesome qualities, and then maintain arising, you know, unwholesome, uh, arising wholesome qualities. So there are, so basically we, you can simply say two, you know, I mean, of course there are four, but <clears throat> weakening the unwholesome tendencies and strengthening the wholesome tendencies. <clears throat> if you have difficulty in weakening and confronting the negative tendencies, <clears throat> work more on strengthening the wholesome qualities and it will have an effect on the unwholesome ones. Yeah. But I think with, <clears throat> with awareness we can, but yeah, there's a hope, yes. I think in life, pretend to meet the, the other version, Vante, where somebody speaks to you very nicely, but that's the opposite, behind your back. I think yeah. that happens more often than the other example. <laughs> this is to me. Yeah, Vante, how do we encourage someone to be more virtuous when they are not aware? For example, uh, I want to give the chance, I give the chance for that person to do dana. Okay. I, I even buy the things and mm. <laughs> yeah. bring the person, but they yeah. just don't, they, it doesn't hit them. Mm. How, how can we invite them to do more good things? Yeah. 
Yeah, you have to be a better version of yourself to influence the person. <laughs> it's still, it's still your version is not enough to influence the person. So you have to work on yourself and be more stronger. Yeah, I mean, yes, definitely. I think we have to be, um, a, be and you can help others, you know. But of course, your your own qualities can influence others definitely. So, and, but we need to think that they will not necessarily you know, uh, understand or they will not necessarily grow as we expect them to grow and understand. You know, they have their own journey. So sometimes you, know, you bring them you know, five times and you know, they don't get it. You know, maybe six times they may get it. You know, maybe six times someone else gets it. Although they don't really get it, but there's exposure it's actually changing them in, at the unconscious level. But it takes some time to, you know, to make that you know, uh, ch change. So you can continue to be kind mm -hmm. and helpful, but don't expect that you know, they will you know, change the way you expect them to change. So is it, because of the, is it because of the conditioning that has happened in their previous life, which is very strong? Still? It could be both, you know, previous lives and also this life too. This life. What kind of okay. examples that he has seen, in you know, the family background, whatever. So, so many other previous conditionings. But now you are giving new conditionings, you know, yeah. So, yeah. so sometimes we need to provide more conditionings. So, but the issue is that, you know, we can't really control that. Yeah. We just keep providing condition, you know, one day the thing will happen. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I take it as a lesson because I try not to get agitated when yes. that happens. <clears throat> then it'll be double, yeah. double uh, effect. Effect, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As teachers, you know, that's the kind of, you know, practice we also are doing. You know, sometimes we teach again and again and again and people do the mistakes again and again and again. <laughs> if we get frustrated and agitated, we will stop teaching. <laughs> But you just keep providing the conditions and people have their own journey. You know, so, you know, so we cannot fully control that. We only can provide the conditions. So, but some, sooner or later they will get it. We just have to keep providing the conditions you know, okay. with equanimity. Yes. So <laughs> you, have to, you have to, can have a compassion, but don't have the sense of control. True. Equanimity, you know. True. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone for spending your evening here listening to the Dhamma and by coming here and spending this time listening to the teachings of the Buddha, try to understand how we can use the Buddha's teaching and our own potentials to grow within ourselves. We have generated so much of good karma because our mind was free from greed, hatred and delusion during this time. So let us now re share <coughs> all these merits with all our departed ones. First of all, let us recall to our mind our Dhamma teachers, our spiritual teachers who showed us this path. So let us think about our late Chief Kesri Dhammananda, Nayaka Mahathir, and also our most venerable, late venerable Dr. Madhavalapunnaji Mahathir, our beloved teacher, and all other spiritual teachers let us share this merits with them. Let us wish them to continue to uh, teach and help this world with their compassion and, uh, and continue their service, their bodhisattva path. Let us also share these merits with all other departed relatives. Could be your family members and think about them, share this merits with them. Let us wish that may they too <coughs> have the opportunity to listen to the Dhamma and practice the Dhamma and then get benefits from the Dhamma. Let us also share this merits with all other devas, <coughs> the beings in other realms. May they too share this merits and may they too have the opportunity to practice the Dhamma and may they be well, happy and peaceful wherever in their realms, and may all living beings share these merits. May all living beings be benefited by our merits. May all living beings be well, happy, and peaceful. Idang mi nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayo. 
ಇದೀನೋ ತು ಸುಖಿತಾಹುಂತು ಇದೀನೋ ಸುಖಿತ ಹುಂತು ಜ್ಞಾತೋ ಇತ್ತಾವತಿ ಸಂಭತ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಸಂಪದ ಸಂಬೇದೇವಾನುಮೋದು ಸಂಬೇಭೂತಾನುಮೋದು ಸಂಬೇ ಸಂತಾನುಮೋದು ಸಂಬ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಸಿಧಿಯ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಡು ಅ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ ಚಾನ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು you put your effort to come here i wish may all of you be blessed with more strength more good health more peace in your mind may you all have healing and good health sabhityo vivajjantu sambhrogo vinasantu mate bhavantantarayo sukhi digayuko bhava bhavatu sambh mangalam rakantu sambh devata sambh buddhanu bhavin sada sotanti bhavantu te bhavatu sambh mangalam rakantu sambh devata sambh dhammanu bhavin sada sotanti bhavantu te bhavatu sambh mangalam rakantu sambh devata sambh sanghanu bhavin sada sotanti bhavantu te